Let's talk to Georgina right now from the Institute for Government. Thanks for joining us on BBC News. And what's your understanding of how far the talks have progressed? So obviously we haven't had um, the press conference yet or a statement from the UK government, so a lot more hinge on that. But I don't think anyone was expecting a breakthrough, but certainly both sides were hoping for progress. Now, what we have heard is that there has been some movement, for example, in negotiations on security arrangements, that's you know, police cooperation, that kind of stuff. But those stumbling blocks, which um, Chris just mentioned on the fish, on governance, all of those remain. Um, so it's really crucial um, to see what happens over the next few months. What's in your view is the biggest stumbling block or is it not possible to separate one out? It is a series of stumbling blocks. Um, yeah, I think it is. It, it is a series of, of quite substantial stumbling blocks, and that's because the UK and the EU's um, point of departure is very, very different. Now, you know, if you think typically uh, an EU trade negotiation lasts anything between a year and a half and six years, it would be quite normal for both sides to be far apart at this point in the negotiation. But of course, the stakes are very high here. As Chris said, it's not just about trade, it's also about security arrangement. And crucially, there's no status quo to fall back on if the negotiations do break down. So from one day to the next, on the 1st of January 2021, businesses will be operating in a radically different environment and you need time to prepare for that environment. And that's why um, you know, the Prime Minister and EU leaders are going to look at what's happening this month and decide what they need to do next. You could forgive leaders for perhaps having their eyes slightly off the ball in terms of the coronavirus pandemic. I wonder what your view is as to whether that will have any effect. Well, it's interesting. The um, German ambassador to the EU yesterday um, was speaking in Brussels and he said, look, you know, obviously the EU's attention has been fully on COVID at the moment. Brexit um, or the future UK-EU relationship is important, um, but he didn't think that EU leaders would be intervening, that's in sort of the heads of EU government, you know, Macron, Merkel would be um, intervening at this point in the negotiations, because again, we're still quite early um, in, in sort of the negotiations. But of course, as the pressure ramps up, and particularly if the UK and the EU decide that they don't want to extend the period of talks beyond the end of the year, you could see more political intervention, I think. Um, but we, a lot of analysts um, suspected no real movement until the summer. So I think everyone will be watching closely what happens over the next weeks. As you will be, I know as well. And I appreciate you don't have a crystal ball. But what do you think, realistically, the prospects of a deal are? I mean, I think it's really important to remember what both sides have said. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, uh, the new commission president, Ursula von der Leyen, said, look, um, there is a lot to do in very little time, but the EU is committed. It's going to put its best foot forward. And the UK government has said that they want to deal as well. Um, there are some that think that actually, as you edge closer towards that, uh, that cliff edge, that's when really you concentrate minds and the, the sort of space for compromise becomes more visible. Um, but I think from the EU's perspective, and particularly member states, they wanted to get a clearer sense of how far the UK was willing to go across these different policy areas before really identifying how far the EU was willing to compromise. Now, we've had four rounds of talks. I think those, those areas for compromise are becoming more apparent, even if we don't know because we're not sat in that negotiating room. No, but we may know perhaps a little bit more, Georgina Wright, uh, because we know the EU chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, is due to make a statement in Brussels in the next half an hour or so. Uh, but for now, good to talk to you. Thank you.